Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into the Word of God today. Let's get into the Word of God. So today I'm talking, so this month we've been talking about faith. So I want to challenge all of you that please go to the YouTube page, watch the first service series. You will have a more exhaustive teaching there. I'm going to summarize in a few minutes all the things that, you know, you know, which is also going to be really powerful. But you get a very exhaustive teaching there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So the question is this. Um, so today I'm talking about believing when it is impossible. Believing when it is impossible. And I know what that means. Believing when it's impossible. I will start with saying this. Last year or two years ago, I can't remember exactly where, maybe last year, um, I was doing like a video call for um, the NLP community. Some, some people, we, we have all these regional groups in different countries. So I was doing for a, a, a Zoom call for the regional group that was in the UK. And um, when they put me on the Zoom call, you know, we're about to close and someone says, sorry, sir, I need prayers. And I said, yes. And she said, then I said, what can I pray for? He said, it's not me, it's my cousin. Then all of a sudden, they put the Zoom of the person, the Zoom page came up. And I saw the lady, the lady couldn't talk, couldn't use her body at all. And she was just like this. Her face was like dried mud. Do you know what that dried mud looks like? It was not, it was like the nose was bent, her mouth was bent. So they later told me that she had cancer and there was a cancerous growth within her nose. And that cancer had spread. So the disfiguring on the outside was because of a growth on the inside. And that she was in a palliative word. A palliative word is the word they put you in before you die. Like, we can't treat you again, just go ahead and die. But, and she could not talk. She could only use her hands to, to, to move. And she had told the doctors, she had told her sister one way or the other that when she was held there, that if they could find a way to get me to pray for her, she will be healed. Ladies and gentlemen, when I saw her, I said, what is this? Because he was like, this person is truly dead. She can talk, she can do anything. But what challenged me the most was this. In that situation, she was still able to believe God for a miracle. Long and short, we prayed. She's up and walking today. Jumping around the whole place. In one, of the, in one of the NLP, she had shown her picture, shown her story. You know, if you see the two pictures, there's no way you can connect the same person. But I'm only saying to you that, how do you believe God for the impossible? The impossible could be like someone here that you're so much into debt. And you're believing that there will be provision that will wipe it out. For some of the people, impossible is that you have an addiction. You have this addiction that you struggle with. And you're believing that the power of God... And you're like, Pastor, you don't understand. I've had this addiction for 20 years. Can anything actually change this addiction for 20 years? Sometimes it's the fact that you're trying to get pregnant. You're trying to get pregnant and it's taken such a long time. And the reason I'm saying so is that you can be coming to church and gradually your faith in God is dying. Oh, wow. <laughs> Am I in church today? You can be coming to church and gradually your faith in God, your faith in the power of God is dwindling and is dying away. And the reason why it's dying is that, hey, I've done everything I can to have a miracle. I don't have one. Maybe God doesn't love me. Maybe God doesn't care about me. That happens. So how do you believe? How do you believe when things seem difficult, how do you believe that you can have a child when the doctor says your, your fallopian tubes are blocked? How can you believe that you can get married when you're almost 40 now? Or maybe you're over 40 already. How could you believe that you can get the funding when there's no physical person that can give you support? How do you believe that? And the reason why it's important to believe is this. Without believing, your faith cannot work. Because faith is predicated unbelieving oh glory to god i say glory to god let's turn our bible to romans chapter 4 in verse 17 romans chapter 4 verse 17 someone say hallelujah hallelujah this is a story of abraham and abraham is a classic example of someone that walked on his believing oh wow 
But you know, the Bible says this, as it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations, before whom he believed. Now, take note of this. This is how God changes people. Ever look up here. When God wants to bless you, he sends you his word. That's how God blesses you. You know, when a human being wants to bless you, we'll put our hands in the pocket and give you cash and give you a lot and give you transfer. But what, when God wants to bless a man, I want you to notice this and know this today. God blesses a man by speaking to him. He looks at Abraham and he'll say, Abraham, you are blessed. God doesn't give dollars. God doesn't give jobs literally. But once God speaks the word to you, everything around him and around you is going to come together to make that happen. So, Bible says, I have made the father of many nations. Remember when he said this, Abraham, no child. So, question. This is a good question. If you are broke and God wants to bless you, what will he tell you? I've supplied all your needs. And you're going to wonder, <laughs> thank you, Lord. But what God does is that God works by his word. You know why? Once God says something, the power to achieve what he says comes out of his word. You know, the angel appeared to Mary and Mary said, it's told Mary that you're going to have a baby. Mary said, how will I have a child? <laughs> they just said, it's too late. He said, what do you mean? He said, I spoke to you and you received it. He said, he said, the sperm you will need to have the child is in what I said to you. He said, as I've spoken to you, the child has come. Why? The power of God is in his word. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than, he said, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edges. So someone says, how does God disappear? The word of God will cut it out. Are you here? Are you here? The word of God is powerful. So how does God bless people? By speaking to them. He looks at a single girl and says, I've given you marriage. And you wonder, where is the marriage? Mm -mm. When God says, I've given you something, just say, I receive it. Your job is to receive it, not to figure out how it will happen. So God told Abraham, I have made the father of many nations and there was no child, but what he had to do. So when God gives you a word, what you have to do is to believe it. Why? Because believing is receiving. And receiving is believing. He said, I made the father of many nations before him we believed. Even God, who quickens, did you see that? He, he was excited God. He said, God that quickens the dead and called the things that be not as though the way. The reason why is that there are two dimensions. There is a dimension of the physical. There's a dimension of the spiritual. God says that they be not in the physical, but they are in the spiritual. You know why? Because if they are not, they cannot be things think about it they cannot be things if they are not so for them not to be not it means in a certain realm they are not things in another realm they are things so the bible says this is what god does he called the things that be in the realm of the spirit and he calls them into being in the physical realm oh glory to god there are two realms people of god there are two realms there's the realm of the spirit and there's the physical realm faith is what transfers it from the realm of the spirit into the physical realm for example you could have money in your bank account it's your atm card that pulls out the cash from the atm into your pocket your faith is the atm card you go into the word of god and you start in your faith and you say all i want is a job and you pull it out by faith praise god oh my god praise god I could just preach myself happy today. I pulled out by the word of God. Hallelujah. But as we talk about faith, I want to focus on believing today. Verse 18 says something very powerful. He says this. And I'm going this what I'm going to. He says, Abraham who against hope. Believe in hope. That he may become. Do you notice that? If he didn't believe, he would not become. He had to believe first for him to become. Question, what do you believe? The reason why is that the law of belief, you become what you believe. You become what you believe. Now look at Abraham's situation. Bible says, Abraham believed in hope. Against hope. Meaning that what he was believing was ridiculous. What was he believing for? He was a hundred years old. And he was believing that he will have a child. 
Meanwhile, he had entered into menopause. His body was not moving again. And he was believing he would have a child. He said, Abraham believed in hope against hope. You know what I'm saying this to you? When he says hope against hope, like, it was practically impossible. I'll give an example. <laughs> Praise God. Imagine your grandfather. Some of you have young grandfathers, not those ones. Your grandfather that is almost 100 years old tells you that your grandmother that is 90 is pregnant. You see how you laughed? The first question was that how did they have sex? So, when the Bible says that, when the Bible says that Abraham believed in hope against hope, it was, not, it was just natural, like this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And the reason why is that there's some of you here, God is challenging you to believe against hope. Naturally, there's no way, there's no way this thing can happen, naturally speaking. But that's why we're people of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. It says, we're against hope, believe in hope, that he may become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, take note of this, I want to take note of this. Real Bible belief and faith is based on the word of God. So I'm not believing, so let me tell you, so, 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 this is how some people behave. Um, so we pray for marital testimony, praise God. So this guy starts following you. Ah, Father, thank you for answering my prayers. In Jesus' name, you know, then the guy stops. He says, Father, you didn't answer again. Bye-bye. You know why? Because your definition of answer is based on the physical evidence. The Bible says he believed not because it felt good. He believed because of what was spoken. He believed because of what was spoken. So when your body, so when you wake up and you don't feel the pain, ah, Father, I thank you because you have done it. When you feel it, oh, Father, I've lost the healing. See, I don't believe because I feel or I don't feel. I believe because God said so. I believe because God said so. I believe because God said so. Your belief is powerful. Your belief is powerful. Your belief is so powerful. It affects everything. There are two kinds of belief. There's limiting beliefs. And limiting beliefs are the things you tell yourself that hold you back. Let me give you some example of limiting belief. Number one, I don't have enough support. That's a limiting belief. The thing about your belief is this. Your belief determines what you will see. Oh my God. Your belief determines what you will see. That's why, watch this now. Bible says 2 Corinthians, sorry, Bible says this. The faith that the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. Yes or no? Yes. Great. That means that if the Bible says the just shall walk by faith, not by sight. For it to compare to faith and sight together, that means faith must be another kind of sight. Yeah, because faith is spiritual sight. That's why we say, you have to see the invisible to do the impossible. How do you see the invisible? It's faith that makes you see the invisible. Believe in, believe in the same. Believe in the same. What do you believe? What's your belief like? See, number one, why is your belief important? Number one, you become what you believe. That's the first thing I read. I showed already. You become what you believe. Belief creates destinies. Ooh. ooh. Beliefs create destinies. So, when you say that I can never do well in this land, you will never. Because your destiny has been created by what you believe. If you say that there are no good men to marry, you will never find one. Because your belief has created what? Your destiny. If you say that joy is very hard to prosper, it will be hard for you to prosper. Because your belief has created your destiny. The question is that, what do you believe? Some of you believe you're not beautiful. Your belief will create your destiny. The problem is not your faith. 
The problem is that what do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe? What do you believe about yourself, about life, about God? What do you believe? I believe that life is sweet. I believe that life is good. I believe that life is wonderful. Is that what you believe? Someone say, Pastor, I have nobody to help me. It's unfortunate you think that way. I don't think that way. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall not want. It's not a memory verse to me. It's my belief system that at every point of time, my shepherd is with me. Glory to God. At every moment, my shepherd, you know, some of you, they say, if you don't have a man, you can't succeed. What nonsense. He didn't say the man is my shepherd. He said the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Do so well that you inspire other ladies to succeed. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. No, not hallelujah. He's limping. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. What, what do you believe? The reason why is that your belief limits God. Your belief limits God. I have never, since, this, since I said preaching for 30 years now, said that I can't do this because I'm sick. I can say I can't preach for some other reason, but never because I'm sick. The reason why is that when I read my Bible, I never saw Jesus Christ sick. I didn't see Peter and Andrew saying that, let's pray for Jesus Christ, so he has malaria. Well, let's start praying, let's start praying. So my brain cannot contemplate the church praying for me because I'm sick. James 5 says, those that are sick, let them call for the elders. If the elders are sick, how do you call for them? Praise God. I can't go around borrowing from members. Do you have 20,000 there? Do you have 50,000 there? Oh, but you can I see 1 million there? Just borrow me. Till next two months, I'll give you back. The reason why is that when I read my Bible, I didn't see Pete Jesus borrowing from Peter, borrowing from Paul. It's the way you believe, sir. So, whatever you believe is what happens to you. Someone say, anybody can die anytime. You will soon. Anybody that says that is going soon. I never say things like that. The reason why is that the Bible says, with long life, will I satisfy you. One day we're flying, and this lady, if a Pastor Monique's friend, she was going to Singapore. I, 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 I don't know her name. Is it Malaysia? Malaysia. She was going to Malaysia. So we got on the plane, and she said hello to me. As soon as the plane got up, I read the book, I got tired, I slept off. So when the plane was on the I woke up, when I say tied up. So she came to me and said, ah, he said, Pastor, ah, you are really a man of faith. I said, why? I said, ah. He said, when the plane was going, gri, 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 gri. I was looking at you, maybe you pray or you, uh, because I was so disturbed, I was looking at you, that will you pray or not? He said, we're just sleeping. <laughs> ah, why won't I sleep? He that watches over Israel, let us sleep in slumber. You don't understand? I, I don't travel alone. Oh, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, he, he that watches over Israel, neither sleeps nor slumber. He's my belief. If I'm in traffic, he's there with me. I, I mean, there's a testimony. I refuse to read it because of misinterpretation, but I can say it in church because I can explain. It's an NLP testimony. Two ladies were kidnapped from like Obalene. They were going to the mainland. And then this when she was kidnapped, she just remembered the things I used to say. She began to speak in tongues. She began to say, I'm an NLP member, blah, 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 blah. The, the person that kidnapped them just told her, park the car, get down. They released her. The other girl that could not pray, they carried her away. The reason why is that because she believed, the reason why she prayed was what she believed. I say, your belief determines your behavior. Praise God. You become what you believe. Your belief, your belief, what you believe is what you attract. So what do you believe? Do you have limiting beliefs? Or you have possibility thinking? Numbers 13 verse 30. Numbers 13 verse 30. Oh wow. If 
if it's too big for your mind, it's too big for your life. Someone say, wow, look, look at how we were. But when we were six, ten, they will tell you, we were majorly 21, 22 years old. I was talking. Grandmothers, listen. Grandfathers, listen. Tell your husband, nobody was married. But faith is a sight. You didn't see it, but I saw it. And the fact that my faith is not in your hand. Someone told me one time, he said, let's, let's be honest. Why are these people that you are talking about? Grandmother, grandfather, husband and wife. Because all of us here are just 23 years old. I say, oh, you can't see them. Oh, like Elisha's servant. Elisha's servant, they've come to attack us. Elisha Elijah said, the people that are with us are more than they that are with them. He looked and said, where are they? Oh, my shatter, yeah. He said, where are they? You know what Elisha did? He said, Lord, open his eyes. Some of you, you need your eyes to be opened. Because when your husband is saying that, don't worry, um, you go and say, that, okay, you need 50 million, we'll, we'll send that. You look at your honey, where's the 50 million? It's not 250k we have in the account. Because now your husband has changed frequency. He's not speaking for a mean dimension. Your mother, your mother just said, Nemo, Nemo, hey, one neck, you not kill me. Oh, one neck, you will not kill me. Why will you bring us Vando? Why will you bring us Vando? I'm growing old, all my hair is gray. I want to see my grandchildren. Normally, when she says that, you know what you do? <laughs> you will not become part of Mama, why are you crying? Oh my God. Mama, why are you crying? Oh my God. Mama, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Mama, stop doing this. You are putting me under pressure. That's because you are not in faith yet. When you're in faith, Mama, come now. He has come. I'm bringing to see you soon. Ah. When you talk, Mama, Mama eh? Yeah? He said, Mama, come now. I don't want to talk too much. I, I don't, why? You, you, are, you are functioning from another realm. Did you hear what Joseph said? Joseph told Jacob, sorry, Jacob told Joseph, he said, the Lord will surely visit you carry my bone out of Egypt. He said, although I will not see it, I know that the Lord will surely visit you. You become what you believe. Either it's positive or it's negative. And that's where it's dangerous. I've had the opportunity in this church to host president, vice president, governors, in this church, not chasing any man's resources, doing the work of God. Why wouldn't they come? The word already said, kings will come to the brightness of your light. And I believe it. We are not just hosting Nigerian president, international president. People came from all over the world. They would just greet them in Abuja. We came to harvest us to see them. Why? That is a destiny. We believe it. So they started again. That's how we normally talk. Don't worry. That's how we normally what? Talk. Because we understand the principle of faith. We we'll believe and we speak. Praise God. I say praise God. I say praise God. Whatever you cannot imagine, you can't deliver. It's not that marriage is cast, but you cannot see yourself married. That's the problem. It's not that funding is cast. In fact, your friends say, hey, it's a lie. Can you imagine what they imagine about your testimony? No, it's a lie. Whatever you cannot imagine, you can't deliver. Many of you, you say, oh, I'm very scared of old age. You know why you say that? Because your picture of old age is a parib- terrible, terrible, very terrible picture. You've seen yourself as a vegetable. Namdi. <sighs> I'm trying to use the toilet. Um, I've already put half on the bed. The remaining poopoo is what I want to do in the toilet. That's not the kind of old age I see. The Bible says at the age of 80, the strength of Moses was not abated. He said your youth will be renewed. What do you believe? Your beliefs are like magnets. You attract your size per time. 
Your beliefs are like magnets. You attract it at time. Didn't you read the Bible? The Bible says in recession you'll be satisfied. There's some scriptures that when you see dollar rise, you just go back to it. Because fear can come, you just diffuse it. The power of your belief. Oh, when we're, we're going to expand this place, we said that this is, we'll say, times three of what it says naturally before. Most of you don't realize that. That it's about times three, almost times three of what it says. So I said, so pastor, we'll reduce the services. I said, no. As we increase, we grow with it. Now, medic services, we use an overflow. Sunday services, sometimes it's packed out. Because that's what you saw. Your mental picture determines your future reality. 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 Someone said, I'll be taking care of my husband. That's why God will give you a husband you will take care of. I know men will always cheat. It will give you a professional cheater. You see, we are saving for the rainy day. You rainy day will come and take your savings. I save for investment. I don't save for rainy days. If you save for rainy days, then you call that rain. Praise God. I say praise God. I, I'm trying. I, I don't want children that will neglect their. Uh, what they call it? I'm just saving all this money because you know children can neglect you. Then your children will neglect you. How can you be saying that kind of nonsense? I'm saving, yeah, but my children will not neglect me. Praise God. Not much of that. Thirteen verse thirty. Oh, man, do ke sabalabadish. Beliefs are like magnets. You attract what you believe at time. So what you have to work on is your believing. What you have to work on. You've prayed enough. What you have to work on is your believing. Believe you can be married and happily married. Not that you, you are marrying leftover. You walk in a bank. See yourself as a CEO. I've always imagined myself as head in whatever I do. Because the Bible says, I will be the head and not the tail. One time I was going to go to India. I didn't want to mention the embassy, but it's okay. So that you can check. I went for the first interview. The guy said, you need some document. I went for the second one. He said, you need some document. I went for the third one. So, so the third time, I said, bring the document and come back again. I looked at him. I said, give me my passport. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'm not going again. He said, what do you mean? I said, do I look like someone that wants to run to India? I said, look, I told the guy, this is real life. Look at me head to toe. I said, do I look like that kind of person? I said, all these documents you ask for every week, do you think I'm jobless? Coming to your embassy every week. This is how I was talking about. Because there's something that I believe about myself. I see myself as a champion, sir. See, I was brought at my Koparo Seattle. First Peter 2 9. He said, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Do you hear me say, Let's now organize prayer against the spiritual workers, me, spiritual darkness? If they gather, they die. The Bible says, Associate yourself together, you shall be scattered in pieces. Don't be among those Christians that their biggest prayer is Satan. How can you be wasting time on the entities? Bible says we are seated far above. You need a far above mentality. Once you deal with satanic spirit, you need what? A far above mentality. I remember they told me you will soon die. I didn't even pray. Die, God. Death me. The fact that you pray shows that you haven't given attention. 
But that's another level of faith. When you are fully persuaded. I was trying to tell you a story about India. So I told the guy, give me my passport. He looked at me and said, you're upset. I said, why won't I be? He said, okay, don't come again. Send your PA to bring the next document. He automatically assumed that I had the PA. You chicken man, you, 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 yes man, oh yes man, oh yes man, ah, auntie, oh, hey mommy, you know everybody's mommy, everybody's daddy, mommy, 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 mommy. The righteous are as bold as lion. How much do you want to hear? <laughs> anything you give me, <laughs> ah, anything? Is that what your God told you? Anything, 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 anything you give me, he said, Ah, sir, you shall receive. He said, Well, I don't know. Um, do you guys pay in dollars and pounds also? I don't like it. Uh, wow, no, we've not been paying in dollars and pounds. You can start with me. You can start with me. Is that not what you're praying for? Why can't you ask for it? Why can't you ask for it? Are you here? Doctor just said, we noticed something. Said, oh, 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 what did you notice, doctor? What did you notice? Hope is not cancer. It's already cancer. Because in your mind, everything is cancer. You don't even know the one that you are pregnant. Your mind has gone to cancer. What did you notice? <laughs> Stop behaving like baby king's way. Praise God. I said, 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 Praise God. No industry is hard for me. Someone say, All and gas, easy for me. Real estate, easy for me. Politics, easy for me. Why? I'm a way maker. Where I go, he says, I will go before you and make the crooked way straight. Maleko palante palakora siata. Nothing. Marriage, easy for me. Funding, easy for me. Approval, easy for me. Children, easy for me. There is a certainty you have that Satan knows don't get this one. You are too chickenly fat for this testimony you want. You need raw faith, sir. Raw faith. You hear one minute, that's just shaking. Hey, one minute, that's. Oh, hey, hey, dollar, 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 hey, dollar, 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 hey, dollar, dollar, dollar. The Bible says the silver and the gold belong to my father. Praise God. Are you here? Are you here? Yes, Someone say, hey, but there's nothing now. That's what Jesus Christ told Thomas. Just because I appeared, Thomas was not there. Thomas say, until I see and touch his hand, I take my hand, put in the hole like this before I believe. Jesus appeared and he said, Thomas, you are so wise. He didn't say so. He said, blessed are those who though they've not seen, yet they believe. The question is that once you don't see, can you believe? That this is the bank I walk, I'll be the MD here. Yeah. Can you believe it? That this altar, I will come and do my Merry Thanksgiving. I remember many years ago, it was, it was about giving. I went for a meeting, and this pastor had taken all the offerings and asked me to give, and he asked for money, and I didn't have to give. And I said it there. I said, my first one million. I was about 18 or 21. I said, it's giving. I was 18 or 21. For me to say I gave my first one million, that means I assumed I was going to have it. That was how I told myself I gave my first 10 million. And that's how I've gone up and up and up and up every time. Someone walked to my office, saw a check. Because I write for checks of big figures. 
is in my office and is my checkbook. Is it yours? Big figures. In the last one year, our church has bought three properties in several, you can't, I can't even mention the figure, but several billions. No one offering has been raised. This renovation you saw here is in the neighborhood of 400 million. Did we ask you for a dime? Faith paying for it. In our church, if you don't give, we love you. If you give, we love you. It's only one offering we take, no matter how depressed, only one offering. The accountant told me last year we spent 200 plus million on diesel. On diesel. I'm only telling you that this thing works. So I'm not telling you a theory. I'm giving you practical. But it's a choice to believe. That, that, that I cannot do for you. It's a choice to believe. When they say go and hold it up in London. It was easier this year. Last year was difficult. Because there was COVID. London pastors called me and said this program will fail. He said people are not coming out. Our church is at 25%. I said, but I heard from heaven. We went there in the power of the spirit. Venue packed out. Staircase overflow. People sitting down. Stiffer kind of eruption. That singular move opened the door. A lot of ministries are doing program in, in London right now. But when we did, no ministry, go and check, was doing program. Why? We heard from heaven and broke out from heavenly powers. Everything rises to your level of faith. Even your giving. You can't give beyond your faith. There's no way you can do it. Your, your fear will hold you. Some of you, you are not stingy. Sincerely, I know you want to give. It's your fear. If you just say, but if you just hold like this, bam, it will paralyze you. Bam. You say, you say, how can you tie it? Do you know what foil is? You say, that's true. I'll tie it next month. I'll tie it next month. This month, I need to manage the money. Money to money. That's what the Bible says. And Abel offered up a sacrifice by faith. Cain gave by head. Abel gave by faith. Faith is dangerous. Though. Faith is doing the ridiculous so that you can have what? The miraculous. <laughs>